just being a hothead. I don't know. Maybe it's the t-shirt. But I keep telling him there's an easy way to curve microengineering flex track. Even if he doesn't want to listen, I hope you'll stay tuned because all it takes is a simple tool and I'm going to show you how I do it right now. Hi, I'm John. Welcome back to the Schuylkill River Valley and another Scully Tip. Microengineering flex track is a bit of a love it or hate it kind of thing. Most people who hate it do so for the same reason that the rest of us love it. Unlike Atlas Flex, flex Track and some other brands, when you apply a curve to Microengineering Flex Track, it holds the curve. It doesn't flex back. Well, that sounds like a great idea until you try it and instead of a nice sweeping curve, you end up with a pretzel. Well, the solution is simple. It's just a simple little tool. This tool is not my idea. In fact, there used to be a commercially available product. If memory serves, it was put out by Microengineering, but I don't see it on their product list anymore. Anyway, it's a simple design. So let me take you over and I'll show you the design and then we'll have a demonstration on how the tool works. It's a very simple tool to make. I just used a cut off piece of hardwood. I believe this was oak. I just didn't want to use anything soft like pine because I wanted the tool to last a while. And I made this, oh, about 20 years ago. So I cut it an inch and a quarter wide, an inch and a half tall, and it's three quarters of an inch thick. It's easy enough to get the grooves into the tool. I just used a handsaw and I cut the grooves about a millimeter and a half deep. The kerf of the saw blade is wider than the railhead. It's about one and a half, maybe two railheads wide, which is fine. It leaves a little bit of play into the, in the tool and makes it easier to use. I then rounded off the corners to make it more comfortable to hold and I hit it with a couple coats of spray shellac just to protect it. It's easy enough to measure the distances. The, in HO that would be 16.5 millimeters between the rails. In N scale that would be 9 millimeters between the rails. Or you can cheat and use a method like this. Uh, apply a little paint or magic marker to the rails. Press the block of wood down onto the rails and that will transfer the marks for the grooves onto the tool. In order to curve the microengineering flex track, I start by placing the tool on the track so that the grooves in the tool straddle the rails. I then apply just a little bit of pressure in the direction that I want the track to curve in this case, to the right. While maintaining the pressure on the tool, I simply slide the tool along the track. It's best to keep a nice, slow, steady motion, and it will likely take several passes to get the curvature that I want. Likewise, if I want the track to curve to the left, I go through the same procedure, but I apply the pressure by turning the, the block slightly to the left. So like I said, to put a curve into the microengineering flex track, I just place the tool on the track so that the grooves line up over the rails, apply a slight bit of pressure in the direction I want the track to curve, and slide the tool along the track. To tighten the radius, just take more passes until you get the radius that I need. If I go too far, I can simply apply a little bit of pressure in the opposite direction and slide the tool along the track again, and it'll bring the curve back. I designed this tool to be the size I did so that I could put 
curves and smaller pieces of track if I need to. This scully tip came about because of a conversation I had with Jerry over at Jerry Sounds. He asked me how I put a curve into microengineering flex track. And even if that hardhead in the intro didn't want to listen, Jerry did. So let's go over and see what Jerry has to say about this tool. So this is a review on a little block that I made on the suggestion of John from Schuylkill River Valley Railroad. John asked me to do a little video of showing you how I use it. Um, to me, you know, this is like, man, this is a godsend because with the end scale track, I'm using micro engineering flex track, right? This little block, what this block does is these lines are cut to fit the track. See like here? Fit the track. So what they do, what this block does is it helps you bend this track easily because this would be hard to really bend, especially microengineering flex track. It's really hard to bend. Um, so it's really hard to bend this track, right? But with this little block, it's really nice. So I'm trying to bend this curve, right? Uh, so what I do is mark the center of my radius, mark the center of my track, and best I can, and then just lay it down and then start working it out. Put it in there. And start bending. The initial part is hardest. But if you get it in there, Just a little bit more. Now, I don't, I'm sure, like, uh, fast tracks, sweepsticks will help you do this easier. But, uh, you know, you can make this in your shop uh, pretty easy from scrap. You know, this is just scrap I had. Just figured that, you know, if I made it double-sided, I wouldn't be fumbling looking for a side. It fits my hand. Um, that's really it. So I'm coming at you. This micro engineering flex track, man, it is hard to bend, man. That's one of the reasons why I like this stuff. When I went to the store to look, when I went over to Yankee Dabbler, because they're local to me, um, <laughs> I was just there. Grab the piece of this track, put a bend in it, and I was pretty impressed by it. And I had, I didn't get it at the time. I left it, had the little bend in there, left it on the shelf, and I came back like a week later. And it was still bent the way I left it because. Uh, this doesn't spring back like Pico and Atlas and I can only vouch for N scale, okay? I can't vouch for anything else. But I don't know, you this is real time. I'm messing with this thing. And you could just keep messing with it, messing with it. 
tua You see how easy it is to bend and the block really helps. You could now HO John's HO so for him it might be a little easier but this flex track like I said micro engineering flex track is tough stuff man That's it man So you see how easy it is to bend it's not perfect, you gotta fiddle it around with it. And I would think that the, I don't know this, but it was just a guess on my part. I would think like a product like uh, the sweepsticks come in handy when you really want to get your, your curves really fluent, you know? But that's it, man. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. I made it thick enough so that it really fits in your hand nice. I think a little three-quarter inch. I just glued two pieces together. Uh, I think if you just did, you know, at least, you know, an inch and a half by inch and a half. Depends on your, your gauge, really. But uh, that's it, man. And again, I used the thin curve blade to uh, make these so that uh, the rail fits in there pretty easy. That's it, man. That's my review. Make one. I've never used the sweepstakes, but I'm sure they're ideal for getting the precise curve radius that you want in your turn. However, I still think this tool would probably be useful in at least getting the initial curve into the flex track. I'm really glad that the tool is working out as well for you as it does for me, Jerry. And I really appreciate you filming this clip so that I can share it with everybody. Thanks a lot for spending some time with me today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any future videos or scully tips like this one. And again, Jerry, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it, my friend.